the world communist movement began moving into America through the educational system. And all of this is all documented. I mean, most people who are well aware of American history know all of this, but I'm just, I'm just parousing over some of the history that most people are not aware of today. But um, one thing that pops up in my mind that I really want people to understand is that Obama came out of Chicago. Well, so did Al Capone. So did the organized uh, syndicates. Uh, the Jewish syndicates, the mafia, the Lucuza Nostra, uh, the American outfits, we would call the outfits. Uh, you know, Al Capone made Chicago famous. Why? Because at one time, uh, going back into the 20s, 20s, 30s, and 40s, 1940s, uh, when I was born, Al Capone and the mob controlled uh, Chicago. And Chicago was famous around the world for uh, for its organized crime, its criminal syndicates. Even the mayor and the city hall were on the take. And there's all kinds of documentaries about this on, tel- on, on television and YouTube today. Go on to YouTube and look up, uh, you know, organized crime in America. And there's all kinds of documentaries telling you about how really disgusting and filthy the political system was, the organized, organized criminal system was in Chicago. But what a lot of people don't know, I do, because I'm 76 years old, and I damn well remember it. But most people today haven't spent 76 years on, on this earth looking at the kind of things I am. But I remember, and you can go on the web and, and clarify it for yourself, that along with organized crime and the syndicates and the Al Capone and the drug dealers and all of the uh, professional criminal outfits coming out of Chicago, New York, and uh, and uh, Detroit and all of those old, you know, we get a we get a glimpse of what it was like in the movie Godfather or uh, Goodfellas. Those are good, great movies, but they were important movies, especially just to give you an idea about what the world and and Chicago and America was really like way back when. A lot of uh, anybody in my audience is 70 and 80 and 90 years old. They don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, America was filled with organized crime, criminal syndicates. Um, So understanding that and understanding that uh, Chicago played the leading role in organized crime, uh, you also need to know with that something I know and the old and the old school people, all the old guys listening to me know, is that uh, they had a partner in crime. Usually criminals do have partners in crime. And organized crime in Chicago in particular uh, was well known that there was a, another component to organized crime. And you could go on the web and check all this out and watch the documentaries. The organized crime in Chicago and, and, and you know, and in, in America continually was the Democratic Party. The Democratic Party was a criminal outfit going all the way back to before 1900. If you go back into the history of America, you will see where the, uh, Democratic Party, what we call Democratic Party, came from. Uh, a great book on that subject was, uh, I've talked about it many times, was Fire in the Minds of Men by James Billington. It's on my website and my research website. So I'll talk about that in a few minutes. But in the book Fire in the Minds of Men, which incidentally is on the web for, for free e- e-book download, uh, Fire in the Minds of Men, James Billington. James Billington happens to be today the chief librarian for the Library of Congress. So you don't get any more mainstream uh, than that, being the li- chief librarian for the Library of Congress. And he wrote a book called Fire in the Minds of Men, where he explained uh, where the Democratic Party came from. And it goes back to the secret societies in Europe 
and the organized crime in Europe and how organized crime came to America. It came to uh, Europe. It went into Russia and, uh, and overthrew the Russian government, went into China and overthrew the, the Chinese government. And it's been, you know, been moving around the world, overthrowing governments, killing people, murdering people. The Democratic Party is a dirty, dirty criminal outfit. Go on the web, go on YouTube, or go to your library and read the, the Democratic Party and organized crime. There are tons of books and videos and documentaries talking about the organization of organized crime and organized Democratic Party, Democratic Party. And so when I see people like Obama and all the others who have come out of the Chicago area who are, you know, I know the history of Chicago. I know the history of the connection between organized crime, bloodletting, murder in, in Chicago, people dying on the streets, being murdered by the organized crime and the organized uh, Democratic Party. The Democratic Party is the filthiest organization on the planet Earth, period. It is directly connected to what we call Marxist-Leninist communism. And if you, if you study the, the theology and the philosophy of Marxist-Leninism that was practiced you know, around the world in communist governments, you will see, as I have said to you before, you will see that all communist governments officially are referred to as people's democratic republics. Uh, China is the People's Democratic Republic of China. The Soviet Union was called the People's Democratic Republic of the Soviet Union. Uh, we have the People's Democratic Republic of Cuba, the People's Democratic Republic of North Korea. It's the People's Democratic Republic of this, People's Democratic Republic for that. All of them are Marxist-Leninist Soviet communist operations. So today, we have in America the People's Democratic Party. Wake up, democratic, read the word. Go back and look at the etymology of the word and the concept of democracy. And you will see that democracy is not a people's democracy. It is a corporate democracy. A corporate democracy today is referred to correctly as Communism. This is why today we don't have Americans. We have the gay, the gay, the gay community. We have the the uh, the Hispanic community. We have the uh, you know we have this community, the black community. Oh, we we are divided into communities, which gives us our word communism. From our commune, our communism, we get our community. And so we're being divided. Well, that's the old communist way, dividing and conquer. So you divide the blacks from whites, you divide the gays from the straights, you divide the, the Jews from the Arabs, you divide people and keep dividing them, and now you have chaos. And out of chaos... We know that the uh, secret societies of Europe said uh, it requires chaos to bring a new order. It's called Ordo Ob Chao. Do some research on all of this stuff, and you'll find out that this old man, uh, what sounds like he's rattling off, is actually telling you the real history of America, of Chicago, of the Democratic Party, of the Mafia, La Cosa Nostra, all the Jewish syndicates out of Chicago and Los Angeles, all of the dirty filthy criminal organizations which are ripping the people off. They call them banks uh, and bankers, and the bankers are financing the politicians. Politicians are crawling on their knees to the bankers, and the whole of America has become a cesspool of organized crime. We call it the, uh, we call it democracy. No, it's not democracy. It's organized crime. So that's why today people who have been born and raised, I mean, I'm not complaining about them, but people who have been born and raised and know nothing else but Marxist communism, 
That's all they have been taught in school. That's all they have seen on, on television, uh, news. That's what they are being fed every day from colleges, universities. Uh, and they don't mind telling you. Uh, universities don't mind telling you that they're teaching Marxist, Leninist, Soviet communism in the universities and colleges and schools and high schools. Uh, and they're doing it in such a way that you're not supposed to know it. But if you've studied the subject, which I have for many years, you will begin to see what's really going on in America today. This is why there are so many uh, demonstrations in the streets today because of Trump being a uh, new president, because uh, Newt Gingrich, I think, was probably said it the best. Uh, go on the web, if you're clever with the web and you know how to find things on on, uh, on YouTube, find the quote uh, that Newt Gingrich, a few months, six months, or maybe seven months ago, uh, Newt Gingrich was asked about his feelings about Trump and the Newt Gingrich was the Speaker of the House one t at one time, and Newt Gingrich said, "quote something to this effect." He said that Washington D.C. is scared to death of Trump. They are scared to death of this man. And Tr and and Gingrich said the reason why Washington D.C. is so upset with him is because he is not a member of the secret society that owns and runs America. And they know he's not a player. He's not part of the secret society that runs America. That's what Newt Gingrich said on the air publicly. Go back, go on YouTube and find it and watch it. So Newt Gingrich was only telling you what we should have already known, that America is being run by a secret society, a fraternal order, and their whole objective is to dis, dis, dissemble, break down, and ultimately destroy the one problem they've had in world domination, the one problem they've had in dominating the whole world and one enormous communist uh concentration camp for the wealthy to put all of the poor working class people into a concentration camp of labor and uh, and suck off the uh, the labor and the wealth of the common people uh it's called it's called uh communism incidentally you need to remember that uh, when the Soviet Communist Party was first being founded, I remember because I'm 76 years old and I was looking at it as a young man. Um, you may not know this, but the, when the Soviet Union was being founded, uh, back in the 1900s, 1914, right around there when they were founding the new communist regime in Russia, um, the communists were, of course, financed by New York and London. The bankers in New York and London and uh, the City Core Bank of Chicago and, and Chase Manhattan Bank and uh, Morgan Guarantee Trust of Philadelphia and uh, other big banking consortiums in America were quietly sending money to the Communist Party in the Soviet Union for a very specific reason, because communism had no money. They had a silly-ass idea about how to rape uh, the Russian people and, and bring in a, a communist prison to Russian people, but they didn't have any money. And so uh, it was brought out, uh, you know, many years ago, it was really out there in the news when the, when the news people were more honest and telling you the truth, there were all kinds of articles in magazines and newspapers about how the United States and London were financing the, the Soviet Union. They were sending money and, and drugs and uh, medical supplies and oil and uh, all the accoutrements which are needed for government, uh, especially food, wheat, uh, especially, you know, foods in particular and oil and gas and money. 
All of this was going to the Soviet Communist Party, which was starving, which had nothing. They were just a bunch of ragtail, uh, uh, ill-informed, ignorant uh, revolutionaries that uh, wanted to take over the government. And so the Americans' uh, system and the British system were financing uh, the whole operation for the communists to take over Russia. Why? Because Russia had so many uh, natural resources, and and so the the British and American um, system wanted to control the world. If they could control Russia from there, they could go to China. From China, they go to Cuba, North Korea, and ultimately the whole world would be communist without knowing that it's the Americans and the British that own the whole damn thing. They own it all. They bought it all a long time ago. And in regard to that, there was a magazine, an extraordinarily fascinating magazine, the kind of which you do not see today ever, and it was called Argosy. You could go on the web and look up the, the word Argosy, and Argosy magazine. Argosy magazine, this is when I was a kid growing up, uh, had all kinds of extraordinarily uh, controversial subjects that they would deal with every month in their magazine, all kinds of reporting on secret societies and crime and syndicates and uh, and fascinating stuff about world politics and world government. Uh, Argosy Magazine was an incredibly fascinating uh, magazine. Well, in one of their magazines, the Argosy Magazine, I had at one time, and it's still out there. You can, I think you can still buy back copies. But there was an article in Argosy Magazine back in the 40s that talked about how the communists needed money so bad they were broke they couldn't earn a there was no way for them to provide the people of russia uh, with food and work because they had no money themselves and so that's why they didn't mind killing off their own people because you you, have, you might as well kill them off you can't feed them you can't provide them with a job they are of no view, they are of no value because they have no education. You've kept them stupid. So I guess the only thing to do is just get rid of them. So that's why the Russian government started starving and killing its own population because they couldn't feed them. They couldn't support them. Why? Because communism never been able to support anybody. Thank God we got bankers in England and America who will send money and food and keep you going. But this Argosy magazine, had an article talking about how the new, uh, how the Federal Reserve, the Federal Reserve was sending money, mil millions of dollars, to the Soviet Communist Party quietly. But it became very dangerous for the Federal Reserve to do that because there were politicians in Washington, D.C., and smart people in America that started hearing about this, that the Federal Reserve is financing communism in the Soviet Union? What's that all about? So in order to quiet down the, the hysteria, uh, they, the, the Federal Reserve came up with a great idea, and I remember it, reading about it in Argosy Magazine. What they did, according to this article, was that they sent the plates they sent the plates to the 20s and 50s and 100s and, uh, uh, you know, money plates that the Federal Reserve used. They sent the plates to the Soviet Union for the communists to run off their own money. So instead of uh, uh, the Federal Reserve, uh, you know, sending money straight to the Russian Communist Party, it was decided they'd be better if we just quietly mailed them and send them over the plates and let them run off the, uh, send them the paper and, and the ink and whatever and let them run off their own, uh, American money so that they can just run that stuff off all day and all night and have plenty of money to pay everybody to kill and rape and plunder and kill all their, rev and, and finance all the revolutionaries and they can buy food now and buy oil and so the Federal Reserve was financing directly the Communist Party of the Soviet Union. And the big banks here in America, along with the big corporations like Ford Motor Company, General Motors, Chrysler, 
uh, Eli Lilly Glass, all of the major big corporations uh, were also sending uh, materials to the Soviet Union to finance and to help the Communist Party. So what I'm saying is if you really do your homework, you will find that the Soviet Communist system that we call today the People's Democratic Republic, you will find that the Democratic Party uh, and the and the um, organized crime out of Chicago, New York, uh, all of a sudden you begin to see that this whole idea of a democracy and the Democratic Party is not based on some wonderful idea of the rule of the people. No, the people have no power at all, period. In America, you have no power. You have to have a license and a permit, and you have to ask permission, <clears throat> and the government can take anything, including your life. And so we don't have any freedoms anymore. And the reason why is because it's a democracy. And democracy is a word, as I said, James Billington pointed out in his book, democracy is just another name for Marxist-Leninist Soviet communism. So the bottom line is that when I see Obama coming out of the old Marxist-Leninist Soviet operation, using the old Soviet communist terms, using the old Soviet Marxist-Leninist symbols and emblems, and understanding who's uh, financing and organizing and directing him from behind the scenes, the old Soviet communists, who of the old school, who came to America like the Nazis during the 40s. They came to America. The Nazis became known as as, uh, as uh, Republicans, and the communists became came over here and started joining the the, uh, the Democratic Party. So when I see this government cram filled with Marxist-Leninist Soviet communist bullshit. And the American people have no idea in the world what is going on. And so there's this war going on uh, between the Republicans, which are Nazi, SS Gestapo Nazis, uh, and there are a few, thank God, there are a few real Americans who happen by chance to be Republicans. And they are real Americans, and there's only a few, but they are very good people who know what's going on. But the uh, overwhelming amount, amount of people in the Republican Party don't even realize they're working for Nazi causes. But there, are, as I said, there's some really good people in the Republican Party. And I know there has to be somebody, I don't know who it would be right now, because I don't follow politics that close anyway. <clears throat> but I don't, I'm sure there must be somebody, uh, who can relate to being an American and America as it was founded in the Democratic Party. I don't know who that would be because every Democrat I hear by, you know, uh, is mouthing the same old stuff I heard 60 years ago, the same old terms, the same catchphrases, um, uh, it's, it's just amazing how much people don't know about this government. So having said that, there's so many other things I want to talk about, but having said that, just understand the reason why there's so much uh, activity in the streets and dem demonstrations from the Democrats, demonstrations. Demonstrations are uprisings in the street. So when you see thousands of people burning cars and you know, and rioting, we call it a demonstration. <clears throat> why? Because they're demonstrating. Because why? Because they are democrats. They have been taught in schools, unknown to them, but they've been taught in schools how to overthrow a government. And so they have no education. Most of them, most of the Democrat and most of the people rioting in the streets remind me of uh, old Christmas tree lights. Half of them don't work and the other half are not that bright. So when I see all of this Marxist, Leninist, communism on one side and the, and the Nazism on the other side, and then there's a few good Americans in government who are trying to straighten this mess out, I understand now what's going on in the streets of America and who these people really are 
And unfortunately, our people, our youth and our people have been brought up to understand uh, the Marxist philosophy of, you know, feed yourself and get the government to give you everything and you don't have to work, you don't have to do nothing. That's all Marxist communism. So that's what I have to say about the Democratic Party. They're all a bunch of communists and all a bunch of fascists and the whole damn butt should be put under arrest for treason.